blood, sweat, tears, burpees, and basketball. Coach Carter has it all. This film led by the legendary Samuel L. Jackson as Courage Carter takes us through the story about hardship, discipline, and most importantly, respect. Mr. Carter agrees upon the role for a basketball coach at his old high school since their basketball team is struggling. In the beginning, we're shown Richmond High to be struggling as they're losing their game against St. Francis by 20 something points. Ouch. Afterwards, the scene in the locker room disputing about everything from points scored to shots missed and everything in between. Carter sees this and realizes that they'll have a lot of work to do. He comes in to introduce himself to the boys not too long after, and it's very clear that the disrespect they have extends to him as well. This comes in the form of jokes and smart-ass comments from Cruz and Worm. Luckily, Coach Carter has a couple of good comebacks to show them that he's not as square as they make him out to be, and that he's not playing no games. He makes them all sign a contract about giving their all in training and in their studies. Eventually one of the boys ends up losing it and storms off the basketball court disagreeing with the coach's methods. This boy is none other than Cruz. I want you to remember that name and remember it well. I'm going to do this video similar to how I did my Dead Poet Society video which is going to be on a character by character basis. Let's start off with Junior Battle. He has some of the worst grades on the entire team. His saving grace is that he's the team's tallest and most dominant player being their main shooter. This comes to bite him in the ass as he's discovered along with some of the other students with having poor grades and skipping classes. After being confronted about it, in a fit of rage, after a back and forth between him and Coach Carter, he yells and leaves the basketball court. This looked like it was going to be the end for him. However, his mother comes in and sets him straight. She does this by coming to Coach Carter from an understanding perspective and gets her son to apologize to him. Soon after this, he ends up starting with some of the other boys and eventually gets really good grades and he ended up playing a key part of Richmond Games High against St. Francis. Moving on, we've got Kenyon. Kenyon is another key player who's shown to be good with assists and scoring for the team. Throughout the course of the movie, he faces a dilemma of him being a dad and learning how to be a provider and how he's going to carve out his own future, not only for his sake, but for his girlfriend, Kyra. They fight a lot, and when I mean a lot, I mean a lot. They even meme mugged each other on a dance floor while trying to make each other jealous for crying out loud. Towards the end of the film, when they make up, Kenyon finds out that Kyra sadly aborted what would have been their baby. But it's also in this scene that he realizes that he was just scared the entire time and he wanted to make this relationship with her work. So he conveys that to her and shows his determination by telling her that she'll be coming with him to his new college in the next part of life together. It was nice getting to see Kenyon get progressively more vulnerable and understanding towards Kyra throughout the course of this movie. Next up, we got my man, Cruz. I hope y'all didn't forget his name just yet. Cruz is easily the most standoffish student that Coach Carter had. He always had jokes, something to say, and an attitude. Remember when I said Cruz walked off earlier? Well, he came back. Twice. Allow me to explain. The first time he came back was after he came back to senses and realized how much he missed basketball and how much he missed kicking it with the guys. However, Coach Carter tells him to go home. Cruz refuses and stands there while he's talking to the guys at practice. Once Carter realizes how serious Cruz is, he sends him on a mission to do a bunch of suicides and push-ups within a week. Cruz agrees and immediately gets to work. At first you think it might be a bluff, but Cruz keeps chipping away and even surprises the coach and the other teammates. By the end of the week, he's given the results by the coach and says that he's failed and come up short. This is when something beautiful happens. The rest of the boys agree to share the weight of Cruz's tasks one by one. Not only does this surprise the coach, but this also surprises Cruz. The looks on both of their faces were priceless. You know it means something when Lyle, the main guy arguing with Cruz, is the first one to help him, thus displaying the teamwork that Coach Carter had been wanting to see from the team since day one. Truly powerful stuff this is. After the boys get caught at the party by Coach during the tournament, Cruz leaves again saying that they won those games and not the coach. Then later on in the film, his cousin Remy ends up getting shot over a drug money dispute. Cruz is sobbing his eyes out and ends up coming to Carter's door in the night. He tells him about the tragic news and asks to be put back on the team. He says he'll do anything over and over again. The more he says it, he starts to break down and even cry. Cruz cries in Carter's arms and says that he's sorry. This was a scene that hit me deep to see a kid like this, especially with the way he grew up, come to the front door of the man he berated for comfort was touching to see. Out of everyone, Cruz has the best scenes pound for pound. Last but not least, we've got the man himself, Coach Frickin Carter. This man is cold. Everything from his demeanor, the way he talks, and how he carries himself is great. 
I love that no matter what the position he was in, whether it be dealing with the troublesome boys or even the board when he locked the gym, he made sure to always treat everyone with respect even when they didn't deserve it in the first place. I love this character for the same reason I love Robin Williams' character John Keating in the movie Dead Poet Society. Both men made sure to treat their kids with respect and as human beings instead of statistics. In Carter's case, he made it a point to make sure that not only his boys pass at classes, but to make sure they chase excellence and shoot high. He did this because he didn't want them to just become another statistic of a guy dying in the streets, becoming a drug dealer, or going to jail. Because all those things lead to nowhere. Everyone else in the film saw these boys as just bowlers. However, Carter saw them as bowlers with the potential to do anything they put their minds to. You can see how much the boys respected him in the end when they brought the desks and books to the basketball court in protest of Carter being denied of what he wanted. Even at the end of the movie, when it shows what the boys went on to do with their lives after high school ended. It showed that they had more potential than anyone else gave them credit for. For example, even though the majority of them ended up becoming basketball players in college, some of them ended up getting a degree in other things. These included a degree in communications and a degree in business administration. This goes to show that if you aim for more than the bare minimum, that you can be whatever it is that you want to be. Samuel L. Jackson did amazing work in this film as Coach Carter. This is the second time I watched this film, which I usually never do, but with this, it aged amazing and hit just as well as it did the first time I watched it. Thank you guys for watching. I'm glad that I got to watch this film again. Damn, this is an amazing job. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we did making it. And this is Black Sugar Lovin', out.